When the unexpected happens, like your site or your service goes down, developers want to know about it fast. But so do your customers. Don't let them spend time thinking you haven't got it under control or that the issue's on our end and they start flooding your customer service. Instead, turn it all into a positive and build trust with them on every incident. Let's look at how we can make ourselves look nice and professional and add a status badge to our sites to keep our customers informed and happy. First, how do we constantly check that our sites and services are working as expected? In my example application here, I have the landing page, I have a dashboard, which is the app itself, and then I have an API that all of this relies on. I'll be using BetterStack for this job as it's the best way to do infrastructure monitoring, but instead of just telling you, let me show you. You can get started with a free account, so let's sign in. Then head over to Uptime and Monitors and we'll create our first one. You can see you can be alerted when the URL becomes unavailable, but there's a load more options as well, like if the URL doesn't contain a keyword or does, if it returns with a HTTP status code other than what you're expecting, and even powerful ones like a playwright scenario failing. We're going to leave it on URL becomes unavailable and I'll paste in the link to my landing page here. Then you can set up the options for on-call escalation, so who is notified and how. We'll leave this on send an email here, and then you can change as well what happens if that person doesn't acknowledge the incident. So after three minutes, go ahead and alert all other members on the team. We can change the advanced settings here. I'm just going to change the pronounceable monitor name. I'm going to change this one to web here. Then we'll go ahead and click create monitor, and that will set up our first one. And there we go, it's run its first check, and you can see it's going to check every 30 seconds if this URL is available. And we'll even get a nice graph of our response times here for different regions as well. I did the same thing for the other two endpoints as well, so the API and the dashboard itself. This is also a good time to go ahead and group these together based on the site name. So I'm going to call this group just demo, and then we can go ahead and move these to that group for some nice organization. Now that we have our monitors, we can create our status page. So go to status pages, create status page, give it the company name. In my case, I'm just gonna call this better demo like so, and then give it the subdomain you want as well. So I'll do the same thing for the subdomain. In the settings, I'm gonna leave most of these as default, but let's go ahead and change the color theme to system. And then you can also see we can change some custom domain things, but I'll hit save changes here. That's gonna create this status page for you. And then we need to go to structure to tell it what monitors we want to add to it. So over in structure then, we're gonna to wanna to create a new section. We'll give this section a name. I'll call this one services in my case. And we can go ahead and add our resources to it. So the monitors that we just set up. In my case, that was the app monitor. Then we had the web monitor as well. So I'll just put that one in since that came up. Then we'll do the app monitor. And then we also had the API monitor. With those added, I can hit save changes. And then we can check out our status page. You can see we've got 100% uptime and we're seeing those three monitors that I just set up of web, app and API. And there's also space on here to provide maintenance and also previous incident reports. So now that we've got our status page, let's go ahead and get our status batch. Now there's going to be two ways to do this. The first way is the super easy copy and paste way. All you need to do is head back to betterstack.com and on your status page configuration in settings, scroll down to advanced settings, and then in here, scroll down to where you find the embeddable badge section. All you need to do is copy this iframe and paste it wherever you want on your site, and you'll get this badge set up for you and ready to go. The second method is going to be a bit more customizable. We're going to leverage the Better Stack API to create our own custom badge component. But first, in order to use our API, we need to go ahead and get an API token. To do that, you can go down to your user settings here and just click settings. In here, you'll find API tokens, and then you can use the global tokens or team-based one. I'm going to go to team-based, and then you want your uptime API token. You can create a new one, but I'm gonna copy this one that I have here. Over in your project then, we're gonna need two environment variables. One of them is for the better stack API key that we just copied, so I'll go ahead and paste mine in. And the other one is gonna be the better stack URL. Now this is simply gonna be the link to your status page, so where you want the user to go when they actually click on the status badge. So I'll go ahead and paste mine in. Now it's important to know you never wanna expose your API keys in the client side code. Instead, you're gonna to wanna to create your own backend API layer or use server components to make the actual API calls. I'm actually using Next.js, so I'm gonna be using that server components way, but the method of actually fetching this data should work in any framework, so still follow along if you're not using Next.js and React. So now that we have our API keys set up, let's go ahead and find out what endpoints we'll need to use to set up our status badge. For that, I'll leave a link to the documentation in the description down below, but we're going to need this monitors and monitor group section here. In monitors, you can actually go ahead and list all existing monitors for your team, but since we created a monitor group earlier for some organization, I'll go ahead and use the monitor group section. We're going to be needing this list all monitors of a monitor group, because when you list this, you'll get the status of all of the monitors you set up. So we'll get those three of the app, web, and the API. But we first need the monitor group ID. To get that, we can actually go ahead and use the list all existing monitor groups endpoint. And we can actually scroll down to the example curl request here. You can pre-fill it with your token. So just select the team that you set up. And then we can go ahead and copy this curl command. Then I'll open up a terminal. 
And in the terminal, I'll simply paste that curl command, but I'll go ahead and pipe this to JQ as well, just so it's formatted JSON. Now that we've got that, you can see that I get that demo group that I created earlier, and we have the ID that we need for it. So if I go back to the documentation then, let's go ahead and see what it looks like to list all the monitors of a monitor group, but this is the one that we'll actually be using in our application. So if I scroll down to that example curl again, I'll go ahead and copy it, and then back in the terminal, I'll paste this in, but we need to replace the monitor group ID with the one that we got earlier for the monitor group that we want. So I'll simply go ahead and replace this. Again, I'll pipe this through JQ as well, so it comes out as formatted JSON, and hit enter on that. So you can see this is what the request will look like for when we call all of the monitors of a monitor group. So we have a various information inside of this array. So these are all of our monitors, but then the information that comes out on the attributes here, you can see the URL that we actually checked. And then we have various things like the status, and at the moment the status says up. You can see our API reference down here in the monitors API response params, and you can see things like what status types there can actually be. So we have things like up, down, validating, pause, pending. So let's go ahead and use this endpoint in our application then. Back in the code, you can see I can now use that endpoint to create my own system status component like this one. Literally all it is is a React component and we make a call to that API. Remember this is a server component, that's why we're using our API key here. If you're using a different front end framework, you'd probably want to replace this with a call to your own back end, where you'd then be doing this fetch request on your back end so you can hide the API key. But all I'm doing with that data we get back like we saw in the curl request is I get the JSON out of this and then we go ahead and filter over it for the amount of them that have a status of up. You then divide that by the number of monitors that there actually is and we can do some cool stuff with deciding what the text is. So say we have three of them that come back with the status of up and we only have three monitors, it's just going to say all systems normal. If it only has two of them status of up, say one of them has gone down, we'll have a partial outage as this number will now become two divided by three. And then finally if they're all out we'll have a background of destructive and we'll say degraded performance or something like major outage as well. And then as you can see, if I scroll down, we're literally just using Tailwind and React to style this here. It's an anchor tag, so the better stack URL here is to the status page. So if I click here, the user can find out more information as they have the status page. And you can see we're literally just using the status color in here and the status label to decide what the text and color is. I'll leave a link to this code in the description down below, but it's now highly customizable. Say instead of saying all systems normal, you wanted to list out all of the systems, all you'd have to do is just map over the monitors that we got back from that JSON. Another cool thing you could do is say that you want your API to be sort of high priority. If that shows a status of down, you could change the text to say major outage or something like that. Another cool trick you could do for customizability is replace that status logic with this status counts one here. What this is doing is it's just using a reduce to go over all of our monitors and count up the different types of statuses we have. So you'll get an object that looks something like this. Say we have one up, two down, and then one pause or one pending. This will just allow you way more flexibility when it comes to actually deciding what the label will be. So here you can see if all of them are down, so if it matches the data.length, we say the system's down, but then we can say partial outage if only some of them are down, and the same with validating, maintenance, pending, Ending, paused, all of the different states. So you really have a high amount of flexibility now. If you do create a cool system status component, let me know in the description down below. I'll be sure to check it out. While you're down there, go ahead and subscribe as well. I want to give a shout out to NextForge, which is a Next.js production ready template. It included that better stack system status component, which I used for the inspiration of this video. I'll leave a link to that in the description down below. As always, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.